Hey everyone, I'm Cecil Laird. I mean Fuego here. And this is your horror show news with, with booze. booze. Once again, you guys, it's Friday. Yep. It's the day that we talk about this week's top horror news stories. And once again, it's a light week. Yeah, but we're going to catch a nice buzz and have fun with you regardless, right? So mm-hmm. thanks for coming along on the ride. Gracias. I'll extend buzz. Thank you very much. Ah, yes. <laughs> so uh, I think first up, Fuego, is one I'm going to jump in on if that's okay I was okay thinking for me. that was going to be the case. I'll yes. sip my beer in the meantime. Uh, uh, huh? And uh, this is something that just dropped a day or two ago as we record this on Wednesday this week. There's good news and there's bad news. Which yes. do you want first? <laughs> uh, we'll give you the good news first, and that is confirmed that we are indeed going to officially be getting a... The Conjuring 3. The bad news. Mm. Unfortunately, James Wan will no longer be helming the series. Much like like Insidious, he Mm. is jumping ship after the second one. He's still going to produce, though. I'm sure, well, as he did with Insidious 2, I'm sure he just feels like he probably has said all all that he needs to say in The Conjuring verse. And they're they're saying they're going to switch it up and not do another ghost story. There's been speculation of werewolf stuff, like, which is a different... Yeah, which is a different one of the the case files that they did. Say what's a ghost? Well, it's not a ghost story. It's well, that's that's the nice thing about the Conjuring. It was mm-hmm. always both movies mm-hmm. are both ghosts and demons. Yeah, exactly. Because I know there's there's different. I mean, Poltergeist taught me that there's different types of spiritual presence. I mm-hmm. guess you could say mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so that uh, we are indeed going to be getting one now. Uh, it seems like it's David Leslie Johnson. He's going to be returning to script it. He did the second film, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess he's currently working on a reboot. Reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street, as I was looking at his IMDb. Really? So, yeah. Who knows, for better or for worse. I mean, he did, uh, oh goodness, I think he did Orphan, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And then there was something else on there, that, like that Red Riding Hood movie that made me kind of shrug my shoulders a little bit. I, I, I didn't think it was that bad. Really? I, I never saw it. It was uh, Amanda Seyfried? Amanda, you know, Amanda Seyfried, Seyfried, yeah. yeah. Or Seyfried, whatever. Yeah, um, I, always I didn't think it was anything. any worse than uh, Sleepy Hollow. Okay. It was okay. very similar. Sleep, then Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton? I wasn't a fan of Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of Sleepy Hollow. I no. love that movie. Oh no, my goodness. Man. I just learned something new about this gentleman. No, <laughs> no I thought it was... I, get, if you want to give me the Headless Horseman tale, give me the old cartoon with mm. him versus Ichabod Crane. That that's, actually scared me as a kid. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's the only time he's ever been scary. He uh, was but it not, was it bloody was not, and you like practical gore. Now, I, 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 I might some, need to give it a rewatch. I learned something today. <laughs> I might need to give it a rewatch, but I just... It, was there walking in it? Yeah, yeah walking yeah, played he the took me horseman. out of it. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, see, that's fucked. But he had stupid. all kinds of makeup and weird like teeth stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was he didn't fucking, show up till like that. Took me out of it. I, I, okay, and well, Kirsten touche. Dunst, right? Um, no, no, uh, Christina Ricci. Christina Ricci. Oh, yeah. okay. Equally as she was distracting. Hot with that blonde hair. Right. No, that's what's distracting. Like She's so much better with the black hair. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh but, my god, give me yeah. Wednesday. Wait, not Wednesday. No, no, she was Wednesday. I know, but she was too young. She was Wednesday. Okay, maybe. Give me Casper. No, she was too young in Casper too. Shit. Yeah, we were kids when those. Yeah. That's what it's all right. We're not perverts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you guys yeah. do like the Olsen twins, though. You're sickos. <laughs> yeah, weirdos. <laughs> In any event, <laughs> I am not a fan of the Olsen no, twins. No, no, I was always too... a step on me. No, man. I, I, uh, I, I'm not. A, I'm not. Myself. I'm not a huge fan of a girl that could slip down the shower drain. <laughs> she, she matured very nicely, though, I must say. Fuller um, House is scary in a different way, though. But, true. Uh, so what's next, Fuego? Next story is going to be some news that you and I have been anticipating for a while, and that's that we got another update on the Tremors television series. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So we know that Tremors... Crow Crow Boy. Exactly. That's it. That's Crow our, Boy. Yeah, look, at, we got one right there, as per our awesome sorry artist friend. sorry if you friend. don't give it a name. Uh, the <laughs> Uh, Reba McIntyre in that first movie, man. But, uh, so, apparently, the series that is going to be uh, with Kevin Bacon returning to the project, uh, it was originally going to be on Amazon. He gave some information this week at the, could you please properly pronounce, Edinburgh International Film Festival. Edinburgh! Edinburgh. There you go. <laughs> so, at the recent... People, it was so funny. People were like, I can't even understand you saying it. <laughs> at the recent Edinburgh you, you, International yeah, Film Festival, you, he gave it, an update. You're, you're mm-hmm. supposed to say it like Edinburgh, uh-huh. but really, really fast. Despite the fact Edinburgh. that it's spelled like Berg, like a Berg? Or yeah, or yeah. Mm. Edinburgh. Well, well, maybe that's why it's it's really fast burrow because yeah. there's no oh you're you're it's Edinburgh. I've heard some fast talking Irishmen like remember Brad Pitt in uh, Snatch. I mean he was talking like do you like Dex? Do you like Dex? <laughs> in any event, we're sidetracking. <laughs> but at this film festival, Kevin Bacon was there and he gave an update on the project, saying that 
Blumhouse is officially producing it now, which is cool because we were just talking Conjuring. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big mm -hmm. Blumhouse property, mm -hmm. and they are officially set to film a pilot, and it's moving from Amazon to Sci-Fi. And the funny thing about that is that Sci-Fi did the uh, other Tremors television series, which the ill-received <laughs> Tremors well, TV series, and they broadcast the episodes out of order. As I was reading on the IMDb, <laughs> which was kind of funny. It's not unheard so, of. Actually. I know it, a it lot happens of TV frequently. Shows do that, but. Yeah, did, it, did did they even show all the episodes in the initial run, or did they? Like, no, no, yeah, they did. They got I, through I like four so. or five, I think. No. Um, but I have the whole series. I've watched all like it's eight sitting, episodes it's or whatever. Next to my TV because you love it. It's worth <laughs> watching. I mean, the effects are just the same as they were in the first movie because those were mm. all practical. So it was it, it was all practical. Hmm. It, it was not the Tremors it was done, three uh, stuff. Well, well, wasn't it done after like two and three and four though? Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. It was, but well, was you like know, maybe I, no. You know what? Maybe. Here's the thing. It was so disappointing that I might have blocked it out. Yeah, I did okay. watch the whole thing, and now that now that you're saying that, I think maybe there were ass blasters and yeah, they had the, like and that. the flying ones. Yeah, well, actually, the flying ones. Are the, the ones that were right? always the best were um, the the actual worm ones. And if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. I like the ones. There in, was, the one in Mexico if I'm not mistaken, legs. there was a nemesis worm that mm -hmm. like was the through line baddie, like that was El Blanco. I think they called him. Where he was the white tremor, the white graboid. Okay, so so they did something different. That's yeah, what, yeah. It, well, it, you know, they they knew when it was El Blanco coming. Like uh, it, it was really. It, is he like way bigger or something? I or? can't remember exactly why. Okay. Again, at this point, it's been so long. Yeah. But um, so many tremors tie-ins at this point. Six uh, six movies. Well, coming, no, it's like just I said. haven't watched it nearly as many times as I have watched the other ones. Mm -hmm. I've actually watched two and three. Probably um, at least three or four times each. I really like two. Yeah, three, three was okay. And Back well, to two, Perfection uh, yeah. was four. Or was Back that, to Perfection was yeah, and four was, was better prequel. than three in yeah, my opinion. I thought so too. That was um, weird. you still had the Bert, it was like Burt Gummer's great great his ancestor <laughs> that moved yeah. to perfection. Yeah, he's the only one who's been in all of these. I'm curious if after Tremor six, he's going to show up in this TV series. I would hope so. At least I mean, if he gets a series order. If it's if it's the same, I mean, and then eventually they have to bridge them both, right? Mm -hmm. They have yeah. to. Because if Burt is still too, playing Burt mm -hmm. from the Tremors series in Tremors Six, and I want and Ward, Val, but... you know, and, and Val and Kevin Bacon is playing Val from the first movie, then they have to bring Burt into it. Was the guy in the first and second one? Was that Fred Ward? Fred Ward, yeah, yeah, because he gotta be great if he came back yeah. too. Yeah, he was awesome too, man. He's I, done a lot. He's done a bunch of movies so since then. You yeah. know, he's he's not a, he's not a, a, a uh, ill liked actor. People yeah. really dig his work. Nice. Well, I will dig if this gets a full series order and that uh, it actually, you know, doesn't just be a pilot that we never get to see. So I think it has a better chance on sci-fi than in Amazon because doesn't Amazon do the, hey, here's a pilot. Do you guys like it? And they have like a voting yeah. thing and stuff. Yeah, they did so. that for The Tick, which is now going, uh, it's, it's now going as a series. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, coolness. So what's the next story, man? Uh, you know, uh, this I one can, is that... I can elaborate Yeah, on go this. ahead. You do yeah. that. I'll do the next one. Yeah, coolness. So uh, this is a little bit of an update from Neil Marshall that he gave during a podcast called Postmortem that Mick Garris, a dude that I have a lot of respect for, does. And so he was talking about how he's intent on using as much practical effects as possible in this Hellboy reboot, which is entitled... Rise of the Blood Queen. Now, since I haven't read any Hellboy comics, have you? you you've read some Hellboy comics, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you know this character they might be referring to? I'm sure I do, Queen but Blood again, I have or... the first ten Hellboy trades, hmm. but or I think maybe the first eight actually, hmm. and then I have like the first twelve BPRD trades, but um, I don't remember exactly what the Blood Queen is. For some reason, it makes me feel like uh, it was something that possessed Liz at some point in the okay. series, who was played by Selma, Selma Blair, Blair right? in the first yeah. couple movies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I could be entirely wrong on that. Hmm. Yeah, the only, uh, I want to say Mike Mag Mignola? Magnola? Mike Mignola, yeah. Mag Mignola, yeah. The, I think the only stuff of his I've ever actually read, he did or did not do Grendel. Oh. I can't recall, but I mean, I, I always think of the No, alien. no, no, that's, um, no, it's a different Mike. Okay. Well, well, in any event, I know he did Alien uh, Matt, Salvation. No, that's, that's um, Matt Wagner, is it? No, okay. he, let me... Ch I Maybe it was Matt that. Wagner, yeah, because it I... Might I, have been Matt Wagner. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But uh, did, he did a comic called Alien Salvation, if I'm not mistaken, where it was like this samurai going against uh, an alien, which is pretty dope. And he has a very distinctive artistic style. He's apparently co-written the script for this. That is being directed by Neil Marshall, who did Dog Soldiers, who did The Descent, who did... That weird movie Doomsday, 
which that, was kind of was Mad Maxi. One. It was yeah. strange as hell, man, but yeah, still not Matt too Wagner bad. Okay, Dino. Matt Wagner. Yeah. I'm just jumping off with my weird Kevin Smith thoughts and <laughs> such. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy yeah, that... because he did Mage also, right? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, that was where the guy almost had like a lightsaber type thing going on? Um, you that? know, I only read the first uh, the first trade. I don't have the okay. other two trades, but I guess Mage is coming back, too. But okay. anyway, okay. side, side cool. track. But, uh, yeah, practical effects galore is what he's shooting for, and he says that he always prefers to shoot stuff on camera with awesome effects and makeup and whatever already done and then do a slight augmentation with CGI afterwards and he also talked about the freedoms of the R rating and how he's not going to try to cognizantly push it like it's it's not going to be Logan where there's deliberately F-bombs everywhere okay. he's going to just really try to serve the story and he's happy that there's no constraints that you know he's like the book is rather bloody at times and I'm happy that I have the freedom to just approach it however the hell I want and uh, David Harbour from Stranger Things is cast as uh, as this new little shaved down horns hell dude, and I'm very curious hell what dude. it's gonna. <laughs> well, he's a well, he's a hell dude. He grew up from being Hellboy, and there's a hell dude. I don't know, <laughs> but so yeah, uh, just a, a, another update about this project that is supposedly gonna start shooting in September, which is exciting. Nice. So wow, uh, that's quick. Yeah, yeah. They're they're. I mean, he was doing like a makeup test on Twitter, and Harbour had like. His, there was like all this glue looking like paint stuff. I mean, it, it, it looked like some sort of, I don't know, like they were doing like an arm cast type thing on him and he was like right up against the camera like that. You guys are Yeah, they're making that. his Fist of Doom. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are seeing that right now. Well, that's cool. He knows better than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the the right hand of Doom is, is yeah. the, that's, that's why Hellboy's right fist is so much bigger than his left hand. It's, oh, okay. It's a whole part of the... Uh, um, the prophecy of him ruling over mm. hell and eventually all of creation is his horns grow out and he rules with his uh, his uh, fist of doom. Hmm. And so he's he still has the fist of doom, but he yeah. shaves the horns off. So is it fist of doom or hand of doom? Because I think hand of doom, Black Sabbath, bro. Uh, I think it's fist of doom. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> uh, so the next thing up is the fact that we are getting uh, another sequel of sorts. And that mm-hmm. is that we are getting a new anthology collection of Hellraiser done by Clive Barker himself, as far as writing, yeah. right? Now, well, he's writing a portion. We reported... Just like the first time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we reported about this before, and so I guess there was a lot of success to this new anthology from all these different artists, all these different writers that contributed original stories to this that was only available at a convention and then also on Clive Barker's website, realcliveBarker.com successful enough to have a sequel coming. That's awesome. I I still need to get my hands on that because I have the first two anthologies that they put out, which were Hellraiser Masterpieces, Ah. um, and that was two volumes of that, and that was the short stories from like the 80s and the 90s. Yeah, I think Brandy got me one of those. Yeah, I have them both, and and they're pretty cool. One of them is even done by... God, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's written by the Wachowskis or something like that. Like it's it's really weird. Some of the talent that they got in the early I'm, I'm, that might be out of nowhere, but it's yeah. some strange talent like that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so I'm really excited about this because I, I I'm bummed I never got the first volume. I hope I can still get my hands on it. I but think I'm it's still on there. Yeah. I'm excited that that it did well enough to do this because it you know two days before my birthday I can get my I hands know. on this. I know. And the biggest selling point that everybody's talking about in the headlines about this is that this actor named Nicholas Vance who played the chattering, chittering teeth guy in the movie. Chatterer. Yeah, is apparently scripting an original story, which is an origin of that particular... Cenobite. Cenobite, yeah. I was saying, you saw me searching for the word. I, I, I was about to say, it like, yeah, it's like uh, Pinhead's Posse or something <laughs> like that. But I guess beyond him actually scripting it, uh, Clyde Barker himself is going to do the original pens and inks for it, or pencils and inks for it. Wow. So he's not coloring it, but he's going to do the art and then the well, guy who cool, plays the character is writing the original it. original sketching for the original movie? So. Yeah. yeah, so that makes sense, actually. Well, yeah. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, so that's why I'm excited about that particular story. Ah. So what's next for you, Fuego? Hell yeah, man. So what's coming up next is a a platform that I know you can offer more insight about, but I can probably more so because I saw Arizona in the title of this, <laughs> this game, and I was like, ah, oh, us being here in the deadly desert. We That's have to talk about this. Yup, we were sweating our asses off these last few weeks. Oh it's, been, it's been hell. We live in hell. It's actually hotter than hell. When Satan is coming on a vacation, he comes up here to Arizona, and he's like, oh, I'm in the Cali. This is even hotter than where I live. So, that, 
in any event, I'm trying to be funny. It's not working on this guy, hopefully on you guys, but there is a game called Arizona Sunshine that apparently last year was named the VR game of the year for the Steam and Oculus okay. platforms, and now it's officially coming. So that would be, yeah, the Oculus Rift and yeah. the HTC Vive. Exactly, okay. yeah. And now it's officially being ported over to the PlayStation VR because of its popularity. And, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, with the added PS4 extra power, it's also going to have the Sony AIM controller aspect implemented as well. Oh, so it's a shooter. Exactly, oh. yeah. And it takes place in a post-apocalyptic Southwest, i.e. Arizona, where you can go around and there's zombies and all kinds of craziness. That's just cool. The, just the screenshot you guys are looking at right here. I think this game looks rad. The graphics look cool. But for me to be fully immersed in that, I'm hoping you get to see some Let's Plays from us about this particular game. Well, I'd game. have to buy that controller first. Oh, because it's, okay. It's a, it's a separate it's, it's a gun. Oh, no shit? It's, it's an okay. actual gun. that it, it came out with a video game, the first full... VR shooter to come ah, out on the PSVR. Sick. Um, and it's it's it's, it's like, like full on like rifle. It's yeah. Kind of it's like, like a machine. It's like shaped like a machine gun. Oh damn! You shoot back here, and you there's actually motion on this part up here, so you can move your character and stuff like that. That sounds that spicy. But mm -hmm. yeah, and it's got the same ball on the end that your that controllers do and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, you hold it and you got. And it's just like so that, it's, you know. So it's way beyond the game where I was half faded and couldn't figure out the calibration of it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> way beyond that. Nice. Um, but uh, but it's exciting for me because yeah. I'm actually a really big fan of those kind of games. Like I you said, light gun games. Light gun games as a kid. I man. had the uh, Area I had the Super NES Bazooka, mm. um, which had uh, a couple of games, like two games, but one of them was like a mech. Guy, uh, a mech game. I, I don't vaguely, know if it was Gundam I, or something I like that, but this, yeah. but it was uh, a mech would like fly on screen and you'd have to like take it out. You were in your own mech and you'd like try and shoot its key points and shoot the uh, the things it was shooting at you and stuff like that before it hit you. Like mm. it was so awesome, but it was a full bazooka that yeah. you like had to put up to your eye and like a beep. Yeah, it had like the scope like, and everything. Yeah, the remember, super right? scope. Yeah. It was called the super scope. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I remember the ads from Nintendo Power back in the day. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah. I love that stuff. So that's way I, I beyond... definitely want to get that gun at some point. Yeah, yeah. I had like T2, the arcade game on Genesis. That's about as far as I got until I, you know, got better consoles. But damn, we've come a long way from Duck Hunt, haven't we, man? Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just a wee bit. Thank goodness, though. If Hallelujah. we hadn't, I would be like. What's wrong with the human race that yeah. in my entire lifetime we didn't still get VR? And I can't virtually kill things yeah. like, properly. We still didn't <laughs> get to VR? Oh, come uh, on. I know. We were talking about it in like the 80s and 90s. Yeah. We should, before I die, we should be Bumble able to do die. everything that we thought of for movies in the 80s and 90s. Flying cars. Where Flying the hell cars. Are you? Bring back dinosaurs. I want to see all that stuff I'm, happen I'm, I'm before I die. I'm going to back to the future. I want to have the little pizza that you put in there. You want to hydrate a pizza? Damn right I do. <laughs> you really can't hydrate a pizza, Mom. Yeah, you can't <laughs> have a Pepsi, and he reaches up. Uh, I, I love Back to the Future, too. But uh, getting back to the game as we transition to the next story, 10% um, off on this game through July 4th. So if you want, it's, I'm assuming it's available now if they're really? already having that in the news story on Bloody. Oh, shit. So, All right. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, that's going to move us on to the last story, which is a smaller story, but it's, it's an amusing story. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the fact that Jake Busey has not only been cast to be in the upcoming Predator reboot, uh, but apparently it's not quite a reboot. It's actually going to be more of a sequel because Jake Busey is going to be playing the son of of Gary Busey's character from Predator 2. Yeah, that wacko Gary Busey, his papa, his yeah, son. His actual Shasta son McNasty is, is playing be his uh, movie son. <laughs> no. So uh, it should be fun. Uh, I don't. I still don't know what to make of it outside of the fact that Shane Black knows his way around a good movie. So Yeah, being I in the original encouraged. Predator. And I mean, and so this officially confirms our suspicions that this is a re-bequel. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Your terminology. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a reboot slash sequel. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's they're trying to get the franchise going with a bunch of new characters uh, by just sort of you know tagging in a couple of other characters or throwing in characters that are related to the characters that we know. Yeah, exactly. God, I hope it's better than Alien Covenant. Uh, I still don't see why you're such a beef with that movie. But... Uh, the personal stuff, but uh, <sighs> The Predator by Jack Black. Or Jack Black. By Jack Black, <laughs> good lord. Oh, I want to see that movie, damn it. Uh, Predator by Shane Black is coming August 3rd of 2018. So look damn, forward to really? that. really? That long yeah, still? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, dude, they, they delayed it, remember? Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, they, they're like, this is going to be some money-making stuff. Let's, uh, you know... 
Fox was like, let's push it deep into the summer, because originally I think it was coming January or February or something, but they saw they saw possibility. So unlike Covenant, where they push it forward, Predator, they push back. Huh. Yeah. All right. Push back. Well, there you go. So that's going to do it for this week's news stories, you guys. We told you it was a week. bit of a light week, but... Yeah. Uh, but that's going to leave us some time to do a couple of other reviews and Drink things more we beer. need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, stuff like that. But uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be recording our review of the first episode of Blood Drive. We just yeah. recorded our review of the second episode of Oat Studios by Neil Blomkamp, the uh, Firebase short yeah. uh, that was just put up. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, we got a lot that we're doing today, but uh, short news day because it was a short news week. So yeah, we tried, think, guys. Yeah, you know, we did. Got we we don't want to make it artificially long either. So we have better things we can be doing, just like I'm sure you guys do too. So we trim some fat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys very much for watching, though. We greatly appreciate it. I've Amber. been Cecil Laird. I've been Jaime Fuego. And remember, stay scared.